This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, thriller, and drama film called The Northman. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Prince Amleth spots his father's ships, so he rushes to his mother's chambers, but Queen Gudrun scolds him for entering without invitation. The so-called Raven King, or Vandal War Raven, soon arrives at his castle and is welcomed by his wife and son. Gudrun worries about the king's brother, but Orvandil assures her that he'll join them soon. As spoils from the recent battle are presented before them, Orvandil gives Amleth a princess necklace. Finally, Orvandil's half-brother, Fjolnir, arrives, and is welcomed by the royal family. The royal jester, Hamir, pokes fun at the queen. This angers Fjolnir, but Orvandil calms him because it's just a joke. After the festivities, Orvandil reveals his wound to his wife. Due to the near-death experience, Orvandil wants to prepare Amleth to become his successor. Gudrun thinks he's too young and comforts her husband by seducing him, but Orvandil refuses. Soon, Orvandil takes Amleth to the temple, where he dips a golden band in blood. They then head below the temple and crawl like wild animals. Hamir begins a ritual and lays down two bowls before them. Following Orvandil, Amleth eats from the bowl. The two men ask questions about their legends, urging Amleth to gain strength and courage to avenge his father once he's defeated. Finally, Orvandil removes his bandage, revealing his large wound. This makes Amleth cry and Hamir catches the tear, noting that it'll be Amleth's last tear of weakness. Amleth then approaches his father, who forces him to touch the wound. Upon his touch, he gets a glimpse of Orvandil's heart, which extends into the tree of Yggdrasil. The two leave the temple in the morning, but Orvandil is suddenly shot by arrows. He tells his son to run as he battles the men alone. Orvandil is, however, quickly defeated. As Orvandil kneels, the leader removes his helmet, revealing himself to be Fjolnir. Orvandil stresses that stealing his throne won't make him a king, so his reign will not last. With that, Fjolnir chops off his head and orders Amleth's death, so the prince runs away. Amleth hides under a broken tree, but when he comes out, he immediately gets captured. Amleth draws his dagger and slices the man's nose to escape. Soon, Amleth reaches the village but finds Fjolnir's man killing the people. He hides under a cloak and witnesses his mother getting taken away. Unable to fight, Amleth escapes just as the man with the sliced nose declares that the prince is dead. Amleth heads into the sea and swears vengeance for his father and to rescue his mother. Years later, Amleth is amongst Vikings who raid the land of Rus. Despite the arrows and spears sent at them, the Vikings climb the walls and kill the men. Amleth drops from the wall and attacks a man on horseback. He easily dodges arrows and even bites on a man's neck, fighting like a beast. After the battle, the women and children are gathered. The Viking elder commands Amleth, noting that they knew of his strength and courage when they found him as a child. As children are torn from their mothers, Amleth looks on with cold hatred. Soon, a house filled with children is burnt down. That evening, Amleth walks to the burnt house and finds a seeress who knows his past. She grabs his hand and returns his last teardrop, reminding him who he shed it for. She instructs him to sail to a northern island where he'll kill Fjolnir beside a burning lake. She adds that a vixen will lead him to the fated sword that'll enact his vengeance. When Amleth asks why she predicts his destiny, the seeress notes that his journey's end will begin the Maiden King's path. The next day, as the Vikings mark their captives, Amleth learns that some will be sent to Fjolnir's land in Iceland. Amleth asks why Fjolnir is in Iceland, so another man recounts that Fjolnir fled there after losing his brother's kingdom in battle. Suddenly, a raven swoops past Amleth. He takes it as a sign from his father. With a plan in mind, Amleth steals clothes from a villager's corpse and marks himself to be sent to Iceland. He then swims the sea to catch up to the boat. There, he sees a young woman named Olga, who whispers a spell to comfort her companion. At night, as Amleth surveys the boat, Olga sees him and immediately recognizes him as a Northman and not from Rus. She tells him if he wants to be a sheep, he should hide his cunningness. However, Amleth shares that he intends to kill their shepherd. The boat is soon caught in a storm, and Amleth and Olga end up helping each other through the ordeal. As Amleth sleeps, he dreams about the seeress, his father, mother, and Fjolnir. He then sees the sword in a volcano. Last, he sees a vision of Olga in Yggdrasil. Soon, as they walk to Fjolnir's farm, Olga asks why Amleth posed as a servant, and he reveals that Fjolnir stole his father, mother, and kingdom, so he intends to kill him. Olga comments that Amleth has the strength to break their enemy's bones while she can break their minds. At their farm, Fjolnir's young son, Gunnar, explains about doing a servant's work. Fjolnir tells him that they cannot predict their fate since they can also become servants. By helping in the work, they prepare themselves for a harsher fate while assuring the servants that they're strong. Fjolnir then watches his eldest son, Thorir, yelling in anger before being defeated in training. The new servants are then lined up before Fjolnir and his family. Amleth looks on as he sees his father's killer. 
Upon hearing that they'll just be sold off again, Amleth drags his chains down, knocking down the other servants to show his strength. This catches Fjolnir's attention, so he decides to keep him. As they choose other servants to keep, Fjolnir also finds Olga interesting, so he tells his men to keep her beautiful. At night, Amleth sneaks out and attempts to steal a knife. However, he stops when a man throws out a vixen who's killed a chicken. Amleth works around the farm the next day when he spots men bringing tapestries into Fjolnir's house. Later, he forcefully takes the spot of one of the men to enter. Inside, he follows a humming voice and finally spots his mother brushing Fjolnir's hair. Later, Olga asks him if he found what he lost. Amleth says he did, but it was a nightmare. Suddenly, men call on Olga, reminding her to stay close to Fjolnir. Olga asks Amleth to look for her if she's lost before she gets taken away. That evening, Amleth sneaks out again to follow the vixen. The vixen leads him into a cave where a he-witch waits for him. The he-witch reveals Hamir's severed head, who Fjolnir murdered. Amleth then swears to avenge Hamir as well. The he-witch cuts a piece of Hamir's hair and tosses it into the flames. After the he-witch chants a spell, Amleth hears Hamir's voice in his head. Hamir tells him about the sword that can never be broken nor bent. The sword's name is Droiger the Undead. The he-witch then warns Amleth that Droiger can only be unsheathed at night or at the gates of hell. He also warns that Amleth must choose between kindness for his kin or hate for his enemy one day. Still, Amleth stresses that his heart only knows revenge. The he-witch tells him to take Droiger from its current owner, the Mound Dweller. Amleth then climbs over the mound and digs his way inside. There, he finds the skeletons of the Mound Dweller with Droiger on his lap. When Amleth tries to take the sword, however, the undead Mound Dweller wakes up. He towers over Amleth and swings the sword, so Amleth uses the discarded shields and swords around them to fight back. However, they're inefficient and he gets thrown back. The Mound Dweller evades the light spilling from the hole that Amleth came from, so Amleth swings an old scythe to force him into the light. The Mound Dweller freezes under the light, allowing Amleth to defeat him and take his sword. Near dawn, Amleth returns to the farm but overhears Fjolnir and his men discussing their plans to attack a neighboring farm. Fjolnir then enters a barn and Amleth watches as he wakes up Olga to admire her. To deter him, Olga presents the blood between her legs and wipes it on his face. This earns her Fjolnir's anger. As Fjolnir steps out, Amleth tries to unsheathe Droiger, but it's already dawn, so the sword remains stuck. Instead, he hides just before Fjolnir finds him. As Amleth watches him, he recalls to Cirrus' words that he will slay Fjolnir at a burning lake. Until he finds that lake, Amleth intends to torment Fjolnir. In the morning, Olga purposely drops bread to allow her and Amleth to talk. She tells him that they'll be taken to another chieftain's feast. Amleth mentions Fjolnir's attempts at her last night, so Olga vows not to let Fjolnir's touch remain with her when she escapes. Amleth shares that he found the sword to kill Fjolnir, but until that time comes for Fjolnir to die, he intends to lay waste to the farm. Olga asks what will happen to Gudrun, and Amleth is sure that his vengeance against Fjolnir will please her. He then assures Olga that he will also protect his half-brother, Gunnar. Later, as the chiefs and Fjolnir's families watch, Amleth joins the servants as they compete in a game against another farm's servants. Unfamiliar with the game, Amleth gets defeated in the first round. In the next round, he competes with precision, though a brute opponent still defeats his team. Amleth's team continues to get defeated, angering Gunnar. Finally, Amleth and the brute are the only ones left standing. They battle for the ball, but Gunnar suddenly runs into the field to take it. The brute chases after Gunnar and aims to beat him, but Amleth knocks the man down and kills him. At night, Thorir rewards Amleth with becoming leader of the servants as a token for saving Gunnar and winning the game. Thorir also offers him to have a woman, including Olga, since Fjolnir has grown tired of her disobedience. As the servants are allowed to their own festivities, Olga and Amleth make love in the woods. Afterward, Olga chants a spell to empower Amleth's sword to help his vengeance. He kisses her, then plans to start the reign of terror on the farm. One morning, Thorir finds the carved bodies of his men positioned like a horse over the barn. Thorir is enraged and beats up servants until Fjolnir calms him down. They believe that the Christian servants are at fault, but their priestess, Ashildor, checks the bodies and notes that the wounds were made from an unholy and hungry blade. Thinking it's the work of gods, Ashildor orders a sacrifice. Hearing this, Amleth tells Olga to postpone her plans as they might spill more servant blood. That evening, Ashildor prepares a servant girl to be sacrificed. Suddenly, howls echo from the mountain, alerting Fjolnir's dog, who suddenly attacks its owner. Unknown to them, Amleth howls with the vixen, until Fjolnir is forced to kill his own dog. As Fjolnir gathers his men to search, Amleth rescues the servant girl. Instead, Fjolnir finds Ashildur bound while her helper bleeds above her. As they free Ashildur, Gudrun suggests that the gods choose the sacrifice they want, but Fjolnir is convinced that this is not the work of the gods. 
The next day, the servants are given weapons to protect the land. Thorir disagrees, but Gudrun reminds him that they cannot handle an uprising, so they need the servants to ally with them. At nightfall, Olga tosses some mushrooms into the warrior's stew. She then serves it to the men, making them hallucinate. The men scream in terror as they harm themselves due to the delusions. Amidst the chaos, Amleth sneaks back into Fjolnir's house. There, he finds Orvandil's ring. Suddenly, Gudrun enters and Amleth reveals himself as her son, which surprises Gudrun. He tells her that he'll fulfill his revenge and free her. However, Gudrun reveals that she never mourned Orvandil. She recounts that Orvandil only stayed with her because she gave him a son. This angers Amleth, but she continues that Fjolnir is better because he actually loves her. Breaking his heart further, Gudrun reveals that Amleth was conceived when Orvandil forced himself upon her. In contrast, Gunnar was conceived out of love. She adds that she gave Fjolnir the idea to kill Orvandil, and she also agreed for Fjolnir to kill her own son. Infuriated, Amleth wishes to kill her, but Gudrun toys with his love for her. She then seduces him to kill her new family and be her new king. She kisses him to steal his sword, but Amleth pulls away. Gudrun laughs as Amleth leaves, but he finds Thorir sleeping and stabs him. Outside, Amleth meets with Olga and reveals to her that Gudrun is also evil. However, since Gudrun knows who he is, Amleth must hide. Olga wants to join him, but he refuses as they will hunt her down too if she does because he killed Thorir. Amleth just tells her to prepare to escape when the time comes. The following morning, Fjolnir mourns his son and finds that Thorir's heart was taken. Fjolnir screams in agony, but Gudrun reminds him to show strength in front of his men. She reveals that it's Amleth's work and urges Fjolnir to find the one who helped him enact last night's chaos. Fjolnir then kills one servant and warns the others that they will meet the same fate if they don't confess. When he reaches Olga, she laughs in his face, revealing herself as Amleth's ally. Suddenly, Amleth calls upon Fjolnir, offering Thori's heart in exchange for Olga's life. Fjolnir and his men then charge at him while Olga runs. Amleth easily defeats the men, but as he ensures that Olga is safe, he gets distracted and is beaten down. Amleth is taken to Fjolnir, who retrieves Thorir's heart. However, Amleth hints that it might not be real. Amleth is then bound and beaten to reveal where Thorir's real heart is. Amleth remains defiant, certain that he will not die at their hands. Once alone, a flock of ravens frees Amleth. That evening, the family holds Thorir's funeral. Gunnar is tasked to behead Thorir's horse, while Ashildur kills Thorir's servant so they can join him in the afterlife. Gudrun then splashes the horse's blood onto Fjolnir and Gunnar, and Fjolnir vows to avenge his son. However, they discover that Amleth escaped. Soon, Amleth wakes up in a hot spring with Olga joining him. The two offer their hearts to each other and wonder if fates brought them together to choose a different path. Tempted by a peaceful life, Amleth plans to escape to Orkney, where he has relatives who can give them a home. He tells Olga that he has only ever known hate, but he wants to be free from it. The two then set out and find a boat that's supposed to transport Fjolnir's men. Upon tricking the men into taking them instead, the couple flees the island. However, when Amleth checks on Olga's wound that Fjolnir created, he sees a vision and discovers that Olga is pregnant with his twins. Olga smiles, revealing that she meant to tell him once they're safe. Hearing this, Amleth realizes that their children will never be safe as long as Fjolnir lives. Olga tries to calm him, but Amleth is convinced that he must protect her and their children. Olga begs him to stay and believe that they'll be free, but Amleth chooses to protect his children and enact his vengeance at the same time. Amleth gives his father's ring to the boat captain and orders them to take Olga safely to Orkney. Olga cries as Amleth jumps overboard. Having envisioned that his daughter will become the Maiden King, Amleth returns to Fjolnir's farm just as a nearby volcano erupts. In the dark, he slays Fjolnir's men one by one. Soon, Amleth frees the servants before approaching Fjolnir's horse. Once there, however, Gudrun attacks him until he stabs her in the heart. Seeing his mother die, Gunnar jumps and stabs Amleth on the back. Amleth swings him off and accidentally kills his younger brother. Finally, he finds Fjolnir in the doorway. He carries his wife's and son's bodies and tells Amleth to meet him at the gates of hell. The following day, Amleth rides towards the volcano and finds Gudrun and Gunnar's bodies. Despite Gudrun's sins, Amleth mourns his mother and brother. He then climbs the fiery volcano where Fjolnir ambushes him. Amidst the lava and ashes, the two swing their swords until Amleth wounds Fjolnir's leg. Still, Fjolnir slams him with a shield, forcing Amleth to his knees. Amleth continues to deflect his attacks until Fjolnir slices his arm, making him lose his shield. Fjolnir wounds his other arm and Amleth drops his sword. Fjolnir raises his blade at Amleth, but Amleth retrieves his sword and decapitates his uncle, just as Fjolnir stabs him in the chest. Amleth collapses along with Fjolnir. As he dies, he sees a vision of Olga with their twins, assuring him that they are safe. 
From the sky, a Valkyrie appears and takes Amleth into the gates of Valhalla. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.